Hello friends, my name is Shivam from DevOps Schools and I will help you to enable your learning process in various technologies of DevOps, artificial intelligence, machine learning, big data and many more. This is our initiative to help you by sharing multiple tutorials and videos. And if you want any specific tutorials or any particular topic, then please do comment in the below comment section and I will help you with it. Also, please subscribe to our premium services on YouTube which will give you access to more content and videos to enhance your knowledge about all these topics. Also, if you want me to help you with regards to the online trainings and classroom sessions by our qualified trainers, then do please do write me at uh, contact at devopschool.com. Thank you. I kind of did not get that ID part. Uh, no, see, whenever you sent any one request, no? So it will be given two IDs. One is your uh, trace ID and one is your uh, the root ID. So that is this ID will be common across all your services. I just keep on the locks are keep on changing. There will be a two IDs. Okay, this is for this ID will be same for your entire application. If you have 10 services or 1000 services that you can trace this ID in all the services. This will be there in each and every service where and all the request is traveling. But the another ID, this is only for inter service. This is for inter service. This is for intra service. It will be able to see inside of the service where and all what request happened, what that request is giving. For that, you will have the one ID. So you will be having a trace ID and you will be having the root ID. So that root ID will be taken care for all the services, uh, sorry, trace ID. So root ID will be only inter application. So only inside of that application where that request is went and all. So it that IDs will be assigned by the uh, Spring Sletu. With the IDs. Does that change request? Sorry? For each request. Does it, it change on every request request? Yes. This will the be changed. But the second one changes, is it? Yes. Like you, you are say, saying here, there are two services, right? So like you are sending here, maybe you may have one more service, just taking an example. So what will happen? You are sending your request here. When you send this request, the two IDs will be there. So that is one is your trace ID. And one is here root ID. So this trace ID, the trace ID will be common for this request. In the same ID will be allotted here. Same ID will be given here. And here also it will be a same ID. So where and all the request is traveled in all those services, the trace ID can be identified. But root ID will be only for in, in intra application. In the Netflix, it will be a different root ID. In this, it will be a different root ID. In this, it will be a different root ID. So it's a root ID only in this application, what happens to that request. But trace ID in which service it's traveled, where this is traveled and where it is coming, entire thing we can configure it. Sorry, I guess it is span ID, not a root ID. It's a span ID, yeah. This trace ID generates once per request or it's like the same for any number of requests? No, once, once per, per request. For once per request. request. Yeah, once per one request. That request, whichever the services will be hit, for each it will be allotted the same trace IDs. Okay. Not sure my zip pin is available or not. Let me just check if there I'll just show that also how it will be executing.
Hmm. If I make a request from service one to service two, hmm. so a trace ID will be generated, right? And if service two makes a request to service three in the same sequence, so the then trace ID will same. be same. Trace ID will be same, but the span ID will be different. Okay. You can just uh, take one trace ID and you can identify is this trace ID is present in all the uh, logs. Like I go to currency conversion service. Uh, here I don't have it. Any, any trace ID you can take it. Okay, it's keep on changing here. Let me just go and check it in. Oh. I guess I've copied same. It will be there here. Yeah, it's already pointed so that it will be uh, here, there, and all the services that which in all uh, services it's travel. You can get the same uh, same ID in, in all somewhere. Yeah, 9E65. And if you just go to some other service, 969E. So it will be there in each and every request. You can uh trace it okay so where the same trace id will be carrying for each request okay these logs will be a part of our application logs itself right do we have a way to just uh, okay this will be hmm, a part of our application Yes, yes, this is part of our application only. We can configure the centralized logs also. Like I just given here the logs uh, in my Zoom. Where is my? I configure the logging filter. That's why all my loggings are happening here. Request, request URI with what is the request which is coming. Because of this, I'm getting the trace ID and all. So for the logs only, I've given here logger.info. You can see that request request URI will be there in all. Where is yeah. my? It's keep on changing the locks. That's why it's. But it will, you can see it here that request will be coming. That okay. that logs we have configured by using the Zoom. So you can store it to like uh, I have taken here normal loggers, which is with uh, SL4G, which is already configured in the Spring Cloud. We can configure it to any file appender or JDBC appender, anything. You can configure that appenders as well here. Okay, when you use centralized logging, uh, how do you do it? Usually, you just log the Zool API gateways logs, is it? The common interface logs? Yes, yes. Because each request will be going through with this only, right? And response also will okay. get back from this. So that all the logs will be happens here. Okay, in, in centralized logging, only you can uh, log request response usually. Uh, then yes. application logs and all will be with respect to the application itself, right? Yes, yes, yes. When you have Zool present, you don't have to do anything for uh, configuring that, no? Centralized yes. logging. Yes. All the Zool API logger. gateway log itself will serve as that one. Okay. Ah, but you have to configure the logging filter in the Zool itself. Like this is my Zool application. I just configured okay. how I want my loggings. Okay. We have the Zool filter. So in the Zool filter, will be have some uh, different methods, which is, is it, do I need to do the filtering and uh, what is the request and response so that have object run method is there and do you want the pre filter or post filter that filter and if you have multiple filters you can configure what order of a filter you want to go with like we'll use uh, whenever we have multiple configuration we'll use order annotation no in a single application so in this filter multiple filters are there what order you want to configure in the filter order you can configure it 
okay here but the uh, request only from the client goes through the api gateway right from service to yes. service if you are doing communication it doesn't uh, it no no in that also anything. it will be go through with this only every service to service request also will be going through with api gateway only okay you because you have configured it that way okay in our application yeah. now only from ui it is from api gateway service to service okay, we are okay. directly doing it okay so let's just go okay okay so no here in this application are configured every request should through go through with the zool only because i may be writing some services some some other company may be having some services so that i am making as a one uh, api get so that if service to service interaction also should happen through this that's why here the service control like in the service proxy we configured as a service only oh the zool so it will go through with zool only yeah that depends on how you are configuring yeah between services if you don't use api gateway you cannot get that centralized logging thing that's why yes yes yeah, yeah yeah do you have a different way of configuring that using spring cloud or something only for uh, the centralized logging part with if you are not going through api gateway then you have to configure for each or each application you have to do it okay because when here all the requests we made it as a centralized so that we can go with the centralized configurations but where you, your requirement is uh, uh, it should be only the front end or front end request is coming and the services are interacting directly so that in each service you have to configure the logging okay So in your applications already it is working with uh, uh, like you already developed with Spring Cloud, right? Yeah, API Gateway is there and Service Discovery okay. also. So you're using Eureka naming server only. Yeah. Okay. For the centralized configuration also, like I have used in this uh, is where is my centralized configuration? Yeah. It's Spring Cloud Config Server, but we can use it uh, in the other config server is also there. Let me just open this project. Oh, we have deleted somewhere. Okay, so that is we will be like I have configured here with um, uh, the configuration is also centralized. Like for any application, if I want to get the configurations but first it will look into the uh, spring cloud config server if it is there then it will be or else we can configure it in our locally also like here there are some configurations are there in local also but some of there in spring cloud like whenever it look into application or properties here we are mentioning we are configuring the all properties in this uri which is http localhost of triple h so that it will go and look into localhost 8080 which is spring cloud config servers default port number okay that spring cloud star config server also uh, the code will be written in the simple way like how you did it for api gateway right yes yes it is only directly simple. just add something yeah. so we will only just uh configuring with the git like uh we will be registered to the git uh yes let me just check do i have anything like it will be configuring it to git local repository in that like we'll have a different environments also so we will write our uh, properties like whatever properties your configuration files will be here centralized so where my project is I guess I have deleted maybe. <laughs> it's only enabling a home server that is enable the config server, simple configuration only. 
ओके in that centralized configuration server uh, can you maintain configurations uh, specific to each microservice yes yes or what is the name of a service you will have no that name hmm. of a service you have to give and dot properties okay this service will automatically go and search for that file yes yes So in that case, I guess you are not working on fault tolerance and all, right? No. Or using? We are not using. As this is a desktop application, we have not done all that properly. Ah, yeah. Hmm. Because in GE, most like in the healthcare domain, you have all desktop applications only. No? Like here, it's a it's not a, again entire. It has like three thousand. 3002 two or 3003 services were was there it's some of our clients one which i have used it here so where uh, we have um, number of services it's a simple uh, flight booking uh, application so where we have um, uh, i just took here 1 2 3 4 5 6 services there is only one uh, front end also the front end also here with the uh, theme leaf it is uh, developed so it's a uh, Book dot HTML and booking search, all this uh, front end is developed by here with the theme line. So where uh, we have an application, so from this we are configuring number of REST templates because here we don't require a load balancing and we don't require the faint lines and all. So where we configured everything as a REST templates, and for each URL that is whatever the different application we have it. So from each, we are getting the data, and we are storing into our own data type. So we created all uh, POJO classes here, and we store it into the each POJO array, and that array we are sending to the theme leaf template and configuring. So it is a front end. Uh, this is here instead of Angular. Here it is a front end application. Actually, actual application is in the Angular, the front end. But for my trainings, I have uh, configured the uh, one uh, spring boot application itself so where uh, the rest template it's all will be taken here the uh, the front end data so where we go with the different application this is actually to booking a flight ticket and this is for searching and this is to check in a new customer and this is the one config server where all our configurations can be taken care here this is a simple Config server application enable the config server, and all the properties here can be configured. But I just configured only one property, which is what is a, a Git URI for this. So where we have the interdependency between, like as you said here in this applications, yeah, I don't have any uh, Zulu proxy and all. So e applications are interacting with itself. so that here uh, we don't have any logging feature so that we have to write for each application that logging should be written like where i have a check in customer and config server so first for all the applications uh, my config server should be run first yeah let it run the config server to the config server i have to run here the search flights then the fair calculation should happen then my fourth application is pss book new you can just point then into we, a file system also right instead of git you are right yeah yeah we can anything yeah yeah okay database yes. also yeah check in and then i have your the front end which i want to write it flight 
it is interacting with i just make it for my training purpose so that i configured with a h2 database like here whenever my application is running it is inserting this details to my table so my let all the applications are running so i have here front end which port number is 8001 so it is uh, just simple uh, flight application where i can just search for the flights where i can submit here search it will show what are all the available flights are there we can just go for a book and in that i can provide my details and just confirm so that it will give the booking reference number which is uh, two here and then when i go to flight so i can go to check it and i will give a booking reference and i do just do the searching here it sees okay this is your details you can just do the check it so checked in seat number is 18c and checked in id is 2 so again when i go for a check in and if my booking reference to is given search so it is again giving so i can do check in it again so that is it's not a entire project like as i said it's almost 3002 or 3003 services are there so it's a very big project uh, like only for my uh, training uh, requirements i just took some six services for this i made it as one front end okay for flight book booking application itself there are some 3000 microservices is it and that because client. it is having uh, other features as well not only okay. flight booking it has some uh, other features as well like in the airport what are all the things they will do check in like uh, the in the airport also they'll use that applications right so all the services are as a one application it is okay so there are 3000 odd services are there i don't remember properly how many services but yeah it's odd some 3000 services are there so here nothing used about the spring cloud no spring cloud content is here everything is with spring boot only because we used here for all the interaction like my uh, application which is check in customer new which is interacting with the pss book new so where when i want to check in here i guess in controller i have it is some check in is sending to asynchronous request so it is sending to rabbit mq from the rabbit mq the sender is taking here by using the rabbit message template there will be a check in queue from the check in queue we will be taking to uh from uh what is this which is taking is pss book new i guess so here it's receiving into check in the rabbit uh, listener is configured so check it and the same way it is sending one more queue which is called search queue the search queue and check in queue here the search queue is interacting with the search flight applications so all the requests are happening here the asynchronous request because we'll have a different kind of requirement no so where asynchronous request can happen or synchronous where if it is a synchronous we will go with um, uh just uh, rest template or the pain client as it's a synchronous request to be done so i'm sending to some message broker from the message broker i'm taking it to this okay so any other you want to know or you want to ask about you can ask no you were showing that config server one right now ah In it's only one configuration 
Okay. I just configure to get URI. Okay. You can maintain the configuration in database as well. Yes, yes. All the configurations can be. Uh, because when we run our application, it will first look into is it any configure server is uh, configured because all other applications will become a client for this. Like when I okay. just configure and go to application. So we are making here. So this is the config server. So when you configure the config server in any application, this becomes a client. So by using any uh, versioning tools or by using any uh, Git or Git labs, Git buckets for by using that tool. So we can interact from one application to another application. Whatever the service name you are giving here, like if I give application name as check in service. So I have to create here the properties called check in service dot properties. Okay. Then it will look into the properties with the name of that. Dynamically, if you're changing something in this configurations, uh, will it reflect in the microservice? No, right? Yes, 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 it will reflect. You just have to do the Spring a uh, Spring Cloud Bus refresh. You'll be having the bus refresh uh, actuator for which service you are you are doing a change. It you have to run the refresh for this. For example, if I'm just doing for this application here in any service. I have to run it. What is the port number for this? 8070, right? First, I have to do it here localhost 8070. I will be having the actuator, which is called bus refresh. If you configure the Spring Cloud bus, then only I can do this. This in all the services, you should be configuring this. Yes. All Spring the micro services, you should be configuring this, right? Bus refresh yes. endpoint. Yes, no, it will be automatically there. It is a, a actuator. It's a part of actuator. Okay. okay. But you have to configure the Spring Cloud bus for this. Okay. Because if then one this... instance is there, you no need to do anything. But if number of instances are there, then the cloud bus should be configured. Okay, the cloud bus configuration you write within your microservice itself. Uh, it's only one uh, de uh, dependency. You don't need to write anything. Like here, the Spring Cloud bus is there. No, this dependency we have to add it to our project. Then it will take in care of all this thing. So you can, like anyway, already enable auto configuration and all that. So this boot, not, no boot configuration. Only that starter should be added. Okay, okay. Then that URL will be exposed. No, this URL will be as an actuator for this i no need to configure the cloud bus okay. this will be exposed for everything only you have to enable the actuators endpoints but if you if you have a multiple instances like for this application i have i'm running some 800 instances or some 10 instances 20 instances what the changes you have done here it will not reflect in each instance you have to run this command like 8070, 8070, 8072. Like for each instance, you have to do it. But instead of doing for each instance, you can configure the Spring Cloud Bus. Okay. You clear with that? This is actuator endpoint. So it will be there. Okay. But uh, if you want to trigger that URL, either you should write a script or something, right? Or in the config server, you call that? No, 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 no not required. Does the spring uh, on the actuator endpoints or uh, the refresh and all by default be available? Other things you that want is to available, do but uh, if some if somebody makes the changes to the configurations, he should manually go and trigger that URL, right? Yes, yes. Okay. This URL should be manually triggered. My application properties will be part of the jar, right? Yes. So how do you change the configuration without redeploying it? No, because I'm uh, doing in the config server jar. So in this config, uh, if you replace this jar file, it will be automatically, fetched. this jar file will be fetched from this. Okay. Each and every service, you don't need to redeploy. Only the config server should be redeployed. Okay.
To get our channel membership, click on to the join button, select the 399 plan and grow your skills immensely. So any questions you have? No, nothing. Yeah, anytime if you have, anyway, you have my WhatsApp number, you can send it if you have. I had one question from the first today's class. Yeah, By uh, all the beans are singleton in my spring container, right? Yes, yes. So, but we can also configure it to be prototype. Yes, by using scope. Uh -huh, right. So, on what basis, I mean, it creates a new bean every time if I mention it as prototype? Because you are mentioning scope as a prototype so that it is uh, removing the default nature of a single ton. So that what the property, either you send a property or not, but for each request, whenever you're calling that method, it will be creating the new bins. Whenever I got it. Yeah, you, if you return some database configuration, the flow will be always your app initializer will be called. From the app initializer, it will be called the app config. So in the app config, whatever the number of beans you have written, for each, if you mention the scope as prototype, for each request, new database connection will be established. Then connection pooling will be not taken here. If you so are a single class, not a database class. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. On that class, if I say a scope is prototype, mm -hmm. and it just does some method invocation something nothing to database in that case um if i'm auto wearing this class in my other classes okay uh, so on what basis it creates a new object every time you auto word in another class so that how many number of requests you send to that auto wiring it will be create it will be like the if 10 requests are come to that class so the 10 objects will be injected there Ten request, you mean? Like, if you send a ten request, like you, you are sending some uh, request from the URL, no? Okay. So, so every time yes. it creates an object. Yes. For every REST request, if I mention it as prototype, it creates a new object. Yes. Okay. Then we had another scope also as session. Okay. We had session in prototype. Okay. Okay. Yes, yeah, session. Pro Sorry. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah.
yeah that will be sufficient no instead of yes, using yes. his tricks yes yes the controller advisor is very sufficient okay with fault tolerance mechanisms can we bring up uh, instance or anything like that nothing like that can be done right like suppose no, from no, api get me when you no no that oh, cannot okay. be done but where you want to do the rate limiting you can do it uh, we have a, a fault tolerance tool called resilience by using that okay. we can do the rate limiting like uh, uh, you will be defining some uh, different type of users for your application like vip user golden user like that you will have different users so that okay. per minute how many requests you can accept from this kind of kind of user or per hour how many requests like if you see some website called medium like monthly i can only use that application as a free user i can use only 20 times i can't access okay. more than 20 times it will show it will show only first uh, part of the web page then it will show you have to log in or subscribe so that it is okay. rate per limits that i can configure with the uh, resilience you have 20 free access per yeah. hourly four sorry you have 20 free access per month ah uh, yeah i have 20 oh, i think i have only four or five for medium yeah i have a different mail ids maybe with different i have logged in i'm not sure with that <laughs> okay or like uh, like uh, i used to like i am a certified mules of person so i used to use the uh, esb tool as a mule so in that I used to we used like in our project we used to configure with the um, ESB tool itself the rate limitings and all we don't uh, like at least I have not uh, used with the resilience with the rate limits to configuration because anyway my, uh, my flight application or my bank application all those things have a different services where uh, I require a ESB to be configured so in a ESB it's easy to configure in the YAML file so that at least i have worked with that i never use the resilience uh, for my rate limits to configure in my consultation projects okay when you configure the rate limits uh, based on the user id you will be deciding right number of requests that has to go uh no based on the which type of user you are are you free user or you paid user or month subscriptions or year subscription based on that we will be configuring okay based on that okay based on the user type yeah keeping the count and all that resilience only will be doing internally hmm. we can con yeah yeah the trade count like we it will be internally have an uh, flag on counter so that as it will be that how many number of time from this particular browser you have used or from this system you have used what is the ip address which you are using that configuration will be written internally. Okay. But in your company uh, nowadays, at least I can see from this year, uh, almost one year, uh, the entire internal uh, projects are changing, no? like Spring, Spring Boot, Angular, because uh, almost every month, uh, two Spring Boot and two Angular, it's happening like this. Is it? <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, because of COVID, one more also cancelled. And you know, February or March for the entire team of like 22 or 23, which is near that Vaidehi hospital, there is one branch, I don't know, one branch or one unit of G is there. So we just had like they were working on Angular 1 and uh, there was some migration uh, kind of training requirement was there because I remember the discussion. I was part of it. So it was like I have to give like two Sundays or three Sundays of training that is complete Angular 1 to Angular 2 and 8. That migration training was there. but because of covid again it's cancelled and like team wise i guess five five members like that they are they made it as online and they are attending like online 
but at least i see the internal lot of changes are happening and i heard some one unit has taken care by some all storm or something like that right not sure in g healthcare yeah one Maybe of so. my yeah one of my college mate she is working in g healthcare she also told me that okay. now i am part of all storm team like that she told me not sure <laughs> Yes. We don't follow such things much. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. In every company, it will be there. We only follow how much we need it. <laughs> you take so many sessions every day. Ah, I'll have minimum of four. Uh, Two maximum of three to five. It depends on uh, the trainings because if it's a full day training, then it will be one or two. Like today, I had it like from morning nine to till seven seven thirty. So it actually has to close at six thirty. But there are some doubts this project, you know, so that it's extended. <laughs> That's why. That's very continuous. You have to speak. Ah, speaking is okay. Only is uh, continuously sitting is problem for me. <laughs> yeah, both actually. Nine, like now it's almost nine again. Twelve hours. Ah, but in the middle we'll have one hour lunch break, fifteen minutes of tea break. Okay, still. Yeah. 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 If you have any doubts, the time is free, or I'll end it. Yeah, sure. Thank you so much. This was nice. Yeah, thanks Thank so you. much. Thank you. You can write a feedback in our portal. And okay. Yeah. If you have any doubts, you can message me in the WhatsApp so that I'll reply to. You. Sure. Yeah. Thank okay. you. We have never seen you. So if you come across you in G, we don't. Ah, uh, because I don't uh, come to any. Uh, at least G, I not visited this year. No, it's because this year every training is online training. No. Yeah. Yeah. Like still. Otherwise, you to campus and then give me sir. No, uh, like public batches, you have to come to our office. Oh, okay. It will be in our uh, company premises. If it is like that GE requirement I was telling, it was in uh, your premises. That near Vaidehi Hospital, there is a one unit. Okay. I don't know in which unit you will go. Because there are many. Yeah. Number of yeah. Ours is also near Vaidehi. Okay. Ours is that John F. Welch Technology Center, that campus, JFWTC campus. Oh, okay. 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 So, if you are looking for any other training requirements and all, you can. Follow our calendar, or in your company itself, our calendar will be published. No. Yeah. We need approval from manager, I think, for every training. Mm, I guess so, but we had we got a lot of uh, GE participants uh, for number of trainings. Like last month, I was taking Docker Kubernetes, and that also the people were there from G. I guess two or three was there. Then Angular and Spring Boot. Anyway, we are having continuous of G people. I guess for design pattern, some of the people were there. Docker. Okay. If you have anything, then you can ask me, or else I'll just stop it. Yeah, I think we can stop. Yeah, no. that's a question. Yeah, sure. Nice to meet you, people.
yeah you yeah, can give this yeah. feedback yeah sure yeah, sure all the course content you have uploaded is it i was not able to find the first first course video the one that i had missed actually uh video i'm not videos will be uploaded by the technical team i'm not sure they have uploaded or not there are some gaps in that i just checked them date all the dates were not there when i saw oh, okay i'll just inform them because generally uh, the content code and all will be uploaded from trainers the ppts and the videos all will be uploaded by the technical team okay it's the there, first, no, 14th 14th is the starting date is it yes 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 in the last week we had some five sessions 14 okay. 15 16th and then we had 17th 18th two sessions gap one saturday session was there right it is not there yeah yeah no, uh, 19th okay it's there 19th was a saturday 14 15 16th i guess 17th session is missing i guess so 18th we were not having because 18th was yeah, a friday 19th was a saturday yeah 21 yeah 17th session i guess so it's missed yeah one session is missed 14 15 16 3 4 One, two, three, four, eight is there. So today's will be nine. Yeah, I guess one is missing. Seventeenth is missing. I'll just inform them. Okay. A code where have you uploaded? Can you show that path there? Ah, uh, I have uploaded to some session that session two. And okay, you should click here only in sec. Yeah, yeah. You'll have it in session seven, session eight. Session nine and today's I have not uploaded anything. I have to upload it. Okay. You want the Spring Boot project? That Spring Cloud, which? Yeah. Can you add it? Yeah. I'll just make it as one zip and I'll upload it. Okay. Please enroll our general membership for three ninety nine plan to get access of all the parts. Along with that, you can access our other tutorials such as Docker, Ansible, Jenkins, Terraform, Splunk, AWS, Azure, and various other DevOps-related premium tutorials with our channel membership. If you would have any issues with our channel membership, you can drop an email to us at contact at devopsschool dot com, or you can also unsubscribe from channel membership anytime if you don't want to continue or did not like the video. To get our channel membership, click on to the join button, select the 3D99 plan, and grow your skills immensely. Please be kind enough to like it, and you can comment any of your doubts and queries. We will reply to them at the earliest. Thanks for watching.